Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So, Michael Sata. Uh, well, of course, I was going to say that he was, he was maligned. Then there was also the fact that Michael Sata was very astute. You know, Michael Sata was very astute at, uh, at, at growing his party and had a message which was very captive to the audience. And he managed to convince a lot of people much more than Arabi had given the fact that he would work up weaker power within the within the, uh, the MMD. And there was this onslaught, you know, constant onslaught on Arabi by by people who had decided that by any means necessary, Arabi must, must be dropped. But I think that even in the face of that, there are issues which could have been done within, uh, within the MMD, which, mm. which may have changed the outcome. But, uh, but we are looking at pros and cons. Yeah. yeah. Arabi, was, as you know, you worked with him as well. He was a very amiable person, very mm. funny, uh, very human. He treated very everybody as a human, mm. uh, human beings. And, and, and he was just a very, altogether, a very, very decent uh, individual. And I think that uh, in as much as, as, uh, as people might take issue with this, I think that had Arabi won a second term, people would have seen the side the of him which, which w did not come out because of the onslaught, <laughs> you know, Ooh. and these yeah. other, other, other issues. So that is... Um, Arabi and, Arabi. and on Michael Sata. Michael Sata, the, my view is that the greatest gift that Michael Sata had was had an incredible ability to have connectivity with the population, with the mass. Mm. That he had it. Even under Unique, it was, it was, it was quite, the same. He, he was the same. You know, he had an incredible ability to, for connectivity. That is one. Secondly, uh, Michael Sata was a very practical person. Okay, it was a, it was a very pragmatic uh, uh, person. In in two thousand and six, he had budgeted me to stand on an, on on PF ticket, mm. and I was refusing. And finally, he said, "Okay, let's 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 have a meeting, you and I." You know, he kept on budget. <laughs> so we had a meeting at Omelo Mumba at his house with him for three hours or so on. We were arguing, and one of the things I said to him, I said, "You know, Mr. Sata, the only problem I have with you is that you seem to be." I, I didn't use the word cantankerous, I can't remember, but I was saying you are a bit cantankerous and so mm. on, and you don't want to listen to others. And he said to me, uh, he says to me, I listen to people, I listen, <laughs> I listen, I'm a very practical person. Yeah. Let me tell you, the bridge in, the, in, in Lusaka, the flyover bridge. The flyover bridge, the uh, two of he them. He started giving me examples. Oh, the three of them. Yes, yeah. the mm. three of them. He, and he gave me several examples. Mm? In Lundazi, there was some project and whatever. He said, you know what? These projects were not my projects. Those projects were other people's projects. <laughs> and he said, this, they told me, and I, I took them and, and ran with them. And I saw the practicality of him. He, he was very practical, and he had the capacity to run those, those programs. And it showed when, when, when he came uh, into office. The downside of Michael Sat is that he, he was... He was haphazard, I would say, okay? He was, because of his pragmatism. Because of his pragmatism. He was quite haphazard, and, and as a result, he sometimes did not fully think <coughs> things through mm. from a more analytical, academic approach. approach. And sometimes you can have all of your gifts in being a practical thinker. But there comes a time when you need the... The planning has to kick in. Yes, the planning mm. has to kick in. And he wasn't very, he wasn't very good at, 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 that, at that issue. 
Uh, and, and I think that within the three years that he was there, in, in many ways it was quite clear. He was also quite susceptible to people who he liked. And some of those could mislead, mm. could mislead the president. And I know many cases mm. uh, where I think that the president was misled by others, like the suspension of those judges. I mm. know for a fact that it was not his idea. There were other mm. people, other forces, yes. other forces who pushed him to do it. And there were other, there were other, uh, other cases. Uh, but I, I, I think that the, 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 the biggest problem really with, the, with Sata, in my view, was that he was not a very structured person. He was pragmatic, but he was not a very structured person. Mm. And, 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 and I think that that, that eventually filters through uh, to the way he was governed. But he was pragmatic and, and certainly had a gift. Yeah. Edgar Lungu. Um, you know, of all the presidents, I, I knew Edgar Lungu the least for mm. me. Okay? Mm. Really, honestly, I knew Michael Sata more. I knew Arabi, you know, I knew Chilua and so on. I really didn't know President Edgar Lungu myself. Uh, I had heard one or two things uh, 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 about him, but I didn't know. Uh, I think that his greatest strength, having worked under him, of course I didn't have almost zero contact. I met him, I think, during the presidency. I only met him when, when, when he called me. Mm -hmm. uh, himself again to have a discussion similar to what we we had with Chilua many years yeah. uh, earlier, and I went into the foreign service. Uh, and then I think I met him once when he came to to Congo Brazzaville for some uh, international conference for the Great Lakes region. But mm -hmm. I think that what my brother said yesterday uh, regarding the Constitution of 2016 will probably go down as one of his greatest achievements. I think mm. that, and, and that has been my view even yes, before. Yes, uh, prior. Uh, yes, mm. by, uh, John, John said it. I'd always thought that the, the courage in which he exhibited to implement these issues which were retrogressive, would possibly be retrogressive to him, was, was a lot of courage. And I think mm. that he did. Now, of course, there were some slippages, mm. okay? Uh, but that is one of his, his, his greatest problem, uh, uh, um, issues. Also, the fact that he was very keen to develop infrastructure. Yeah. I think that that is also uh, something that was very positive about uh, President Lung. The downside, in my view, was that he was too, how, how do I put it? He, he let go uh, a little bit too much. You know, a leader must, must exercise balance. KK mm. was very strong. Yeah. Okay? As I said, RB was very hands off, but he controlled. But with President Lung, I think he let it he let it go a little bit too much. So you had fifth dons who had who to then took control. Who also began to take control mm. in particular areas. And and and, and that, that created in my in, in my assessment of the situation. Mm. Created the situation where, for example, the cadres became too, too strong. Yes. Now, yes. I like cadres. I was national secretary and I've been working with cadres all my life. But, you know, cadres need guidance. Yeah, true. Okay? And, and, and sometimes it can be very forceful. And you have to have the tack and the strategy to keep him to have, to have guardrails, okay? Mm. I believe that President, President Lungu lost that. Yeah. And it was one of the greatest issues, my brother, mm. that cost him. Uh, so that, that was one. And I think that even the manner in which uh, HH was then treated yeah. was also a big mistake, in my view. Because when you begin to do that, what you end up doing is promoting that the opponent. And I think that it was, it was really, really disappointing for me to have HH being stopped from jumping on a plane or whatever. And mm -hmm. I said it to people who are close enough that this thing is going to backfire. It's going to backfire and it's going to promote to promote. Because Zambians begin to feel sympathetic. Huh? And begin to look at you as the not so good guy. And I think that that was 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 an issue. Now 
I also think that one of the biggest problems of the, of, of the PF, both under President Sata and, and, and President uh, Lungu, was there was, was there was insufficient control and approach towards the money that we were born. Mm. Uh, because mm. I do know, for example, that the first euro bond was done under President Michael no, Sata, and there were a lot of promises that Z, uh, Zambia Railways, blah, blah, blah. Really and many of these issues were not... I think, I think that the, the, the resources were not used to the extent that they could have been properly used uh, to assist with economic development. And I think that part of that was lack of, as I said, lack of control and too many fiefdoms within, within the governance structure mm. of, of the PF. And, and, and I was a victim of some of those mm. myself. So, mm. But that is a, is a, a story, story for, for another, for another thing. The current one. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that is the one. Yeah, me, the, the current one, I think that, let me say that the, the issue of uh, hubris I've already said. I think that the second issue, which he is not handling well, yeah, the current yeah, president, yeah. is the issue of democratic, promoting democratic space. And it is you fought for democracy all the time. That's this just, becomes a personal project for you. Yes, me. it's a personal project for me, and sometimes it hurts me to see that he, as a president of the republic, who was He's at a the beneficiary of the a democracy. beneficiary of what many of us were doing in 1990, 1991, 92 to try and expand democracy, and has now benefited by becoming the president of the republic, wants to now close the space of democracy. And clearly, no matter what they say, the UPND, there is a close of the democratic space. People mm. are not able to meet, uh, unable to have rallies. Uh, people are being arrested for... I agree that maybe, maybe my brother Sean Tempo can be a bit excessive sometimes, but that does not justify the treatment they've given him. The way you were harangued and, you know, the way... I mean... There is, there is, for the first time, I feel that there is fear in the country. Yeah. I have colleagues who want to speak to me about national issues and will never do it by calling me directly. They will say, oh no, I want to discuss this call on WhatsApp because there is an, uh, the impression, I don't know whether it's correct, that it's, more, it's, it's a more secure line. People are afraid. I, I meet civil servants who say, you know, these and things, are, but how we can't, you know. And so there is actually fear that this government is brutal. Now, perception is very important in politics. It is more important than reality. I think that the current government seems to be very intolerant to people's opinion. And they're very quick to accuse the victim of being the aggressor. Yeah. Okay? And I think that if he doesn't sort this thing out, it will end up be, being one of his biggest Achilles heels. Because yeah. he seems to be quite intolerant to criticism, which means that you don't believe in the democratic system. What he has done to the PF, no matter what anyone tells me, I am 99.9% I am .9 convinced that a great deal of the issues that are happening in the PF regarding Mao, Samp, and so on are all supported by the current administration. And that the role that has been played by the, the judiciary and the legislature in supporting what I call as nonsense, okay, is being, is being controlled by the governing party. They can deny it all they want until they, are, until they are blue in the face. But clearly, this to me is an indication of greater problems to come in the future in terms of closing the space of democracy and moving us towards a one-party state. I know that it sounds... It sounds extreme, okay? I know that it sounds extreme. But believe me, my brother, I have seen these movements before. Yeah. I saw him with Chilua, okay? Which ended up in barring other people, mm -hmm. you know? We saw it with the judges in, in, the, in, 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 in the PF. It was heading a particular direction, okay? And he's, he's doing similar things. I think that that is a uh, uh, second head. The, the, the last the, one before I get the to the last economy. one, yes is um, the issue of the opposition, because with these failings by President Nakai Ndeshi, the people of Zambia would like to look towards the opposition. 
Yeah. As you discuss the opposition, and just largely with the state of our democracy as we, as we begin to wind up. I, I think that uh, the state of our democracy, from my perspective, is, is composed of two, two sides. There is the, the governing party and, of course, the opposition. Uh, of course, there's civil, civil society, society yeah. but mm -hmm. let me just discuss this, 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 these two as the main players in a multi-party state, the opposition and the government. We have spent exhaustively talking about the government. We rarely talk about the opposition. I think that one of the biggest problems we have in this country is that our political parties in the opposition are, tend not to be institutionalized. So that the majority of them are based on one messianic or court figure mm. who has no checks and balances within, within that institution. It's, it's as if they own that party. And, 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 and I think that the electorate can see it. Mm. That is why most of the times these political parties that appear to be owned by an individual end up getting less than 1% or 1% in the elections, as was the case in the last election. I would like to see a, a situation where the opposition political parties are institutionalized, follow their constitutions, and they've got checks and balances within the institution so that the leader is not the owner and the alpha and the omega. I, I think that that is very important because if we don't do that, then our, democratic, our, our, our democracy will always be limited. Mm. Let's get to the PF. Mm. Um, I am not a member of the PF, but I would like the PF to survive. And given the fact that two other political parties who left government have all ended up in a situation where they, are, they, are, they exist on paper, Okay? I would like the PF not to go that direction. And I think that the PF have to study the reasons why UNIP and MMD went di that direction. Because if they don't, regardless of the fact that we acknowledge that the governing party seems to be involved in the events of the PF, sooner or later they will have to take the responsibility. And I know you are, but I, I, you are not in interview. I think we are not having this discussion and, from that point. <laughs> But I think that they have to take responsibility, mm. or else it will be a sad situation. Mm. I am hoping that if there will be a new party born, because I know that mm. there are a lot of discussion of wanting whatever, oh, this one is thinking of, of forming a political. People have even called, you know, we hear. I said, no. I am hoping that if there will be a different political party that will be formed, I hope that it will be on the basis not of one. I hope that it will be a collection of talented individuals who are peers, who will elect a structure which everyone will buy into, which will be within an institutional framework of that political party. You saw the framework of um, 1990 and the MMD. That is, that's exactly what I'm talking mm. about. We mm. need to go back to a framework of 1990, MMD, or UNIP in 1958 and 59. Kaunda was not their fan and the omega of that party. You had, you had, you had uh, Vachona, you had Kapwepwe, you had... You had, I mean, you had a collection of Kavichinis. You had people from everywhere, okay? And, and that is what we need to replicate in our country. We have too many people who are ambitious and want to be president. And then, me, I have been a recipient of so many people coming to my house, offering me, can you be vice president in my party, or can you be secretary general in my party? And I've refused. I said, it's not that I am disrespecting you. I think the minute you join a party on the basis that come and be mine, then you lose the plot. Mm. You must be able to be part of a collective of peers. So I think that, and then institutionalize the, the organization that there is no one single individual. I think that that's the next step in, uh, in, uh, in our development. But let me just say one thing which I think is very important about the current government. Yeah. Because yeah? I know we, <laughs> we, we may be running out of time. Um, the ethnic issue. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid to discuss this ethnic issue. I think that if we don't handle the, the, the sentiments that I am picking up from all over the country about exclusion, and, and, and it is not only about the Kumozi Kumawa issue. It is not. It is not only that we've had an issue to do with the Barossaland issue recently. I know that there are many people and many provinces that there are whispers of exclusion. And directing that a certain 
group are the owners of this issue. The defense when these accusations are put is that you are haters and you never want, wanted us there to, anyway. To, to, yes. I think that that is a very dangerous strategy. And it may be a serious Achilles heel of this government. Mm -hmm. If this issue of everyone feeling Excluded. included, eh? mm -hmm. or people, or men, everyone has to feel included. And this government does not seem to be handling this matter very well. Mm -hmm. And my plea is that they will begin to relook at this matter, the way appointments are made, the way the, 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 way the representation of, of equality is done. I think it's a very interesting matter. I think they're not handling it well, and, and they should change. Oh, wonderful. Mm. Uh, who's your best president among the seven? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, these things are very personal. Yeah. Uh, unless you had a barometer, okay? Mm -hmm. I think that uh, sometimes it's very difficult to compare tenures, okay? Um, I would say that Kaunda should be excluded from this because I, I don't think it's a fair comparison to, to someone who was, was uh, there for literally 30 years and is the father of the, 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 the nation. And I think that he can, I, I, I certainly think that he cannot be put in the same comparative with, with the ones that. that, that uh, On the six? Yeah, of the six. I probably, if I, if, if I was to, to, to rank him, I would say probably Mwanawasa would be, would be the most likely. Although, I don't think that he was perfect. I, I, of course, yeah, of course. No I don't one think is that perfect. he was perfect. They were their I, own flaws. I mean, there, yes, I mean, I mm. think he handled certain issues uh, in a manner which I, I, I disagree with. But I think on the balance of probability, I would probably say Mwanawasa. Yeah. Now... You also have to take note, my brother, that Manawasa did seven years. So there is, there is seven years to assess. But Michael Sata and Arabi did three years. And, and I think that that is, that, that is difficult to, to include those two. So I think you, you can compare maybe Chilu, uh, um, um, uh, Manawasa and Balung, who did comparatively the same. Mm. And, and the one that is there now, I think I started off on a bad note, and really honestly, and I think that if he doesn't change, he, he may end up coming at the bottom of the seven. Mm. And, and that is, has nothing to do with ethnicity, yeah. because I know that that is where they always rush, that mm. if you evaluate someone, then it is because you didn't want Tonga to be president. No, I, I, that is, you know, the, I, I'm the, very the, close to The purpose to of um, the mm. conversation mm. is to deepen political understanding. That's of right, country. yes. I, th I think, this has been lost along the way, and yeah. we, we might attribute it to generation change, because yes. then there's history lost, and you know, our education system doesn't do well yeah. with our recent history. So yes. I think the more meaningful conversations we have, people will now understand yeah. that when we raise criticism, we're not being personal, yeah. or we don't want one to lose power, or that no, we no, didn't no. like them. What? No, it's for the, best, mm -hmm. you know, for the best of our country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are your last words? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, I am looking forward, truly, to the current government, because they're the emotive issue right now, yeah. to the current government doing everything possible to expand freedoms of the democratic system to make it better rather than to reduce them. You know, that, that, I think that that point is very significant. I am looking forward to the opposition political parties becoming stronger and more structured and less dependent on the personal ambitions of individuals. I think it's very important. I'm looking forward to the PF restructuring itself properly within that, uh, within that, within that framework. I am saddened at the fact that the cost of living in this country is atrociously high and that the government appears powerless in, in uh, providing an alternative solution apart from one which appears has been given to them by external sources. Let me just put it at, 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 at that level. And again, like the ethnic issue, 
I think that if this government does not balance external influence policy framework with domestically generated policy framework, that they will fault. Uh, and they may end up being putting the country in a lot of trouble. And that we must all prevent by trying to be an opposition which is fair, okay, but aggressive enough so that the government can be threatened to do certain things within the realm of politics. Oh, wonderful. Mohabi James Lungu. <laughs> I think there is a window for our viewers that they've now known who Mohabi Lungu is. With this conversation, we'll call you for tighter, you know, time of maybe one hour just to discuss specific yes. issues. But this was an introduction of who you are, why you, you do what you do, the values you bring to the table, and the meaningful debate we should have about our country. Okay. Uh, there are many things that are threatened, including our peace and security. Our unity is fracturing. The economy is not doing well. We need to have honest conversations about these things, including truth to the authorities. Yes. Because there is a sense of fear, like you say, where people are not willing to, to discuss ideas. And they are compartmentalized, are UPF, are UPND and they don't want to have that national discourse. Also, I'd like to thank you for sparing so much time. I know you have so much to, to say because you are one of the few privileged people that have this span of life. We could even have gone for six hours. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am so, grateful too, uh, uh, Ambassador. I'm very grateful um, for this opportunity. Uh, and I, I hope that there may be another opportunity, as you say, to look at more... Uh, more thing. And I'm also very grateful to God. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a person of faith. I think that all these nice things you are saying about me are not because of my greatness or intelligence. Sometimes I think that it's just God's blessing and grace. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, amen to that. Mm. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.